Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, May 7th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about COVID-19 and the tens of millions upon more millions of shots administered in the United States, totaling up to roughly one third of the entire United States population covered by two doses. That means one third of the entire population is fully vaccinated. So you can go out, you take a random sample of three Americans, chances are one of them has received both uh, doses or a singular one for the case of Johnson & Johnson, or potentially two out of the three have received at least one dose or one of them being fully vaccinated and the other having at least one dose. Now this is a major step in progress for COVID-19 and for reopening our entire nation. The reason why vaccines seem to have dwindled is largely because certain United States states have refused to get the vaccine compared to other states. If you're looking at the high concentration of vaccines, it does moderately reflect the 2020 election results. The states that voted for Joe Biden very solid in terms of their overall uh, vaccine distribution and their vaccine numbers in a number of ways. And I honestly attribute this largely to the fact that there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a general distrust from the right wing towards the government mandating this vaccine in many ways or just spreading the vaccine itself or just the lack of attention on COVID-19. Now, I don't think it's super surprising that Idaho, Wyoming, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, southern states with very conservative policies in terms of handling COVID-19, don't necessarily have high vaccination numbers. If you're looking at Alabama, Mississippi, only 28% of their population has been covered by both doses, compared to Texas, which isn't doing that much better, but is at 35.5%, compared to New Mexico at 46%, it starts to get trickier. Now, if you're looking at states in the Northeast, you'll notice that 49.9, 43.9, 51, 50, 50. Again, so if you're looking at the states that Biden won, the population covered is much higher, largely because there's a uh, more of an urgency for the vaccine to be distributed and more of a demand. The Republican Party has been very clear that they do not take COVID-19 nearly as seriously as the Democratic Party. That is not a partisan statement to make. One party held in-person rallies and one party did not. One party wanted states to decide a mask mandate. One party wanted it done on the national level. One party wanted COVID-19 relief. The other did not under the Biden administration. So pretty much one party was vehemently against COVID-19 restrictions, relief, etc. versus one party being for it. And the same thing comes down to the vaccine. Many representatives on the Republican side are refusing to get the vaccine, largely because they feel as if this is something that is, you know, how would I put it? A drug, something that is meant to, uh, I mean, in a literal sense, it technically is a drug, but you know what I mean, the negative connotation behind that, that it's something meant to kill off, uh, to make people sterile, whatever it is. I can tell you now personally, I have received both doses. I'm not going to die from the vaccine. Okay, I have not received any side effects. I did not receive any when I got it. I was not, I did not have a fever, anything. If you're skeptical about the vaccine, I can tell you in full confidence, I am so thankful that I have it now because I can go out and see some of my friends. I'm going to see my grandmother soon. It is such a relief knowing that you will not be the reason why someone else might be, uh, you know, fall down to COVID-19 or spread it as much as you would if you didn't have the vaccine because there's newly released data on that. This is not meant to be some partisan issue, a partisan statement. Please just get it if you can. I understand you might be skeptical. You might not be necessarily be trusting in it, but understand the people behind it, the research behind it, the 20 years of research in mRNA. If you can get Pfizer, if you can get Moderna, if you can get Johnson & Johnson, I suggest it. I have had nothing negative happen to me. I know nothing negative will happen to me because of the vaccine. Um, and I am very trusting in it. And I really advise you to do so. I promise you it is worth it. The relief and the sense of security you have with it is so worth it. But let's continue talking about this. So with one third of the United States population vaccinated, what does this mean for Joe Biden? Well, he's pretty much holding steady. We talked about this little honeymoon period that was only supposed to last within the first four months, but seems to be drawing on longer and longer and longer. The approval rating has pretty much stayed the exact same. Unfortunately for Biden, and for fortunately as well, he's a boring president. Okay, we've returned to the sense of normalcy. We have returned to that point. The tweets aren't as, you know, media noteworthy as they were previously. 
The statements sent out by the White House aren't as media worthy as they were previously. Uh, the Biden administration has been handling things a lot more, not secretive, but more contained and more calculated rather than the Trump administration, which President Trump was never necessarily politically correct, nor were his advisors or those closest to him. So President Trump didn't necessarily treat the presidency as you know, the way that Joe Biden is. Joe Biden seems to be very much calculated, scripted, etc., what you would expect of a president versus Donald Trump, who did speak directly to the voter, which I think was largely the appeal from some of those uh, people that did support him. However, it was a turnoff for many people, which is why he lost re-election. So Biden, I think, is really just trying to keep his popularity above water trying to remain that popular president. Now, he's approved of by 13.3%. There have been times where it's been much higher. At some point, it was plus 20 percentage points. And then other times, it was actually narrower right around here, where you're talking about being approved of by around 11 points, uh, you know, 11.6%. So it really d depends. But pretty much, you know, Biden has been above 50% the entire time of his presidency so far. And we're about 108 days in. Now, if you compare it to a uh, previous president, you will note that it's actually right around where some of them were doing. Donald Trump, of course, Biden is doing better, but compared to Bill Clinton, he seems to be right there. Compared to George H.W. Bush, right there. Com compared to George W. Bush, right there. And compared to Barack Obama, narrowly underperforming, but Barack Obama had just won a landslide election right at the beginning of his first term. So Biden's doing well. And the reason why he's doing well is because of COVID-19. It's because of these new vaccination numbers. Now, uh, I do want to address this. Again, like I had said, the vaccine numbers are going down because of Republican states and also Democratic states closing mass vaccination sites. Some states, which have deemed the vaccine something that is now able to be walked in and there's no longer this need to pump out 25,000 per county per day, it makes sense to close some of these max vaccination efforts because if everyone who wants one can get one or can sign up now, you can find places for them, you can distribute them adequately, and then you can start pushing them out. Because the vaccine probably will become at a point where we won't get to herd immunity until those Republican states start to encourage more and more people to get it. Because if you look at the people who have actually gotten the vaccines in some of these states that have reluctant citizens, it's mainly senior citizens and it's mainly liberals. When you look at some of these more hardcore conservatives, many of them are afraid to get the vaccine. Many of them view COVID-19 as a non-essential threat. But now that universities are requiring it, my university will be requiring it in the fall for, this, for students. And I know some students who were not going to get it that now have to get it if they want to come in in the fall. Cruise ships now are only open to people who have vaccines. Uh, a number of things are going to become vaccine required, as many other vaccines are required for you know many other types of public school systems and universities, etc. So pretty much what these companies and these organizations are trying to do, just encourage more and more people to get the vaccine. Because if you look at the data, if you look at the correlation between vaccinations and cases, you'll notice that as the vaccines start to increase, we flatten the curve. Look at the seven day average for cases of COVID-19. This is amazing that it has decreased. And I'll tell you why. Because this was spring break months. This was when college students, high school students, everyone was traveling. Everyone was going down to Florida. Everyone was going to California, to New York. You know, looking, I mean, I went to California, but I was fully vaccinated by the time I had gone to California. But, you know, a lot of people were traveling. And the reason why the cases flattened rather than spiked up like they did back during Thanksgiving or the summer of 2020 or during the winter time is because of the vaccine. Because more and more people are vaccinated and therefore, less people are getting COVID-19. Isn't it interesting how that works? The vaccines do work. And the reason why I'm bringing up Biden and the political implications of it is, first of all, because this channel is called Let's Talk Elections. It has to do with how American events and American politics directly impacts politicians' chances at re-election, etc. But Biden's approval rating is being driven up solely because of COVID-19. And also a couple of other things, but mainly COVID-19. Because when you look at the approval rating, 62.5% of Americans say, I approve of the way he's handling COVID-19. 31.6% say they disapprove. That's over a 30-point difference. That is huge. That is monumental. That is fascinating. That is very good for Joe Biden. So if he's at a 30-point you know, advantage where Trump was at a disadvantage by around 20 points, you're talking about a net performance of 50 points better than President Trump. 
So this 62.5% numbers means that there's a lot of independents, all Democrats practically, and a lot of Republicans that are saying they approve of the way he's handling COVID-19. But of course, like many other things, you know, voters have multiple feelings about a certain politician. They may approve of the way he's handling COVID-19, but might disapprove about other things. Looking at RCP, they also track this exact thing. It's plus 32 on the Real Clear Politics website. But if you look at some other issues, it's actually still in the positive in terms of handling the economy, plus 11.7% after today's uh, abysmal job report, which also deserves its own video, an abysmal job report for the Biden administration, a very, you know, I would say embarrassing one at that, 11.7%. Uh, is where Biden is approved of in terms of handling the economy. And this might not hold after that jobs report, but it's still something that's adding to his approval rating. It closely reflects actually what the national numbers are saying, 11.7% versus 11.8%. Quite fascinating to say the least. Um, actually, almost directly correlated. So the economy still seems to be a number one issue for the American voters, one of the most important ones. They can approve him on COVID-19, but if they don't on the economy, overall their response is no, I do not approve of the job that President Biden is doing. In addition, immigration is where he's really hurting hard. Negative 10 points nationwide. That's bad. Negative 10 points. There's no way to argue around that. That is bad for President Biden. Uh, you know, this is something that is dragging down his approval rating because if it was just the economy, if it was just COVID, he should be up 20 points, not 10. He should not be up by just the same amount as, you know, the numbers on immigration. No, he should be up 10 points. Uh, sorry, 20 points. But he's up 10. He's up by 13 actually. Um, and that, you know, moderately makes sense based off immigration numbers, economy numbers, econ economy numbers, handling of the COVID-19 virus. But pretty much, I will say that Biden would have fared much better had COVID-19 been as big of an issue as it was last year. But it is sort of fizzling out, which is why Biden's approval rating might actually fizzle out as well. And also, like I'd said, it's not just a number of these issues. Biden doesn't necessarily have the highest approval rating on certain things. International trade, it's only 43%. Taxation, 45%. Corruption, 42%. Immigration, 42%. Where is he approved of on? Unifying the country. That makes sense. He's a different voice, a different style of campaigning, a different style of you know doing the job of his president. That makes sense. The environment, yes, that makes sense, 100%. Jobs, probably going to change. This was April 2021. Before that April job report, we're talking about what was expected to be 1 million jobs added, just 266,000 jobs added. That is a good number in a normal year. It is not a good number now. The unemployment rate actually rises to 6.1%. So Biden was supposed to get the country back on track. People are looking at this and saying, hold on a second. Is it getting on back on track if the unemployment number is going up? If the jobs being added reaches just 266,000 when we were expecting 1 million, you know, underperforming expectations, raising the unemployment rate, that approval rating on jobs is going to dip. And therefore, Joe Biden's approval rating is going to dip because the things holding him up, racial inequality, you know, jobs, coronavirus, economy, unifying the country, corona coronavirus is probably going to say the same. I'll tell you that. But the economy, and jobs is probably going to take a dip. So if he's up 11 points in terms of the economy, that'll probably go down. If it goes down to plus five, you're looking at the overall approval rating going down as well, because they're closely correlated and probably will follow a very similar tune. Because coronavirus is something that may be a thing of the past. It's slowly becoming, it's slowly but surely, surely becoming a third world country problem. You know, with one third of the country vaccinated, this makes the priorities shift. The priorities shift to jobs, the priorities shift to healthcare, the priorities shift to the economy, the priorities shift to anything but COVID-19 because so many people have been vaccinated. Almost everyone, you know, in the states that wants to have a vaccine appointment or has wanted to have been vaccinated has already been vaccinated or like I just said, will have an appointment to get the vaccine. So almost all the people that care have had the ability to do so. Now, our average cases, uh, average doses per day went from being around 3.3 million, nearing 4 million, all the way down to 2 million. This is right about where we were around early March. This is not good necessarily, but it makes sense because we have less and less people to vaccinate and less and less vaccination centers. There's no longer this drastic need for mass vaccination sites if the majority of that area has been vaccinated or the plurality or the majority of those who want to be vaccinated or who are eligible to be vaccinated because it's gonna become a lot, a lot less of a threat once 50% of the country is fully vaccinated, meaning vaccination numbers per day might go down to just 1 million doses per day because when we were going up, it was not going to continuously increase. Um, I thought it might actually reach 4 million at some point and ended up dipping down below then 
But the reason why it's dipping down is because Biden and the Democrats are getting people vaccinated and people themselves are putting themselves up to get vaccinated, including myself, including my parents, including many of my friends. And it's honestly a very good choice. And it is a very good step, a major step for Biden and his administration with uh, 100 plus million fully vaccinated citizens with one third of the United States population fully vaccinated. It's a major step for the American people. It's a major step in general, just for our Republican. And I, uh, I am so proud that we have gotten to this point, And I think we just need to keep pushing forward. We need to get more and more people vaccinated, figure out a way that you can help your friends get vaccinated, encourage them. If you've gotten vaccinated, tell them it's not going to kill them. It's not going to make them sterile. It is just going to help them. And it'll allow them to return to public schooling, allow them to return to universities, allow them to return to a sense of normalcy without that fear of COVID-19. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my Biden-Harris administration analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.